Good morning, everyone. My name is Babita, and today I'm going to talk uh, a bit about uh, COVID-19 viral vegan, which we have developed here in our uh, group at uh, European Genome Phenome Archive EGA in Barcelona. Uh, I would like to thank the organizers, the Galaxy team, to, to give us this opportunity to, to tell you a bit about uh, viral vegan. And our, my talk will fit uh, with the visualization part of the of the SARS-CoV-2 data analysis and monitoring system. So COVID-19 viral beacon was developed to share the genomic variability of the virus genome. Uh, genomic variability, as you can see, the mutations, the variations at each position. So it was important to, to know where this virus is uh, mutating and uh, you know at what frequency and uh, um, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So basically, the idea was to develop a platform for a quick search. Uh, you can do it, you know, anywhere. Uh, given the urgency of the system, we wanted to develop a platform that you can quickly take a look at from your mobile phones, for example. So, so it was basically uh, the primary motivation was to make it a very simple system uh, where you can just uh, query, uh, you know, nucleotide variants or amino acid variants along with some metadata and what for. So, for example, which country these variants uh, has been more, more found or uh, you know what is the associated metadata uh, what are the unique cases um, and also to include all sort of data so Illumina not nanopore uh, because then what we were observing more was the data that we were getting was uh, consensus uh, data so we wanted to look, look for example in more granularity uh, to get an idea of uh, of uh, intra-host variation for example uh, so this is the COVID-19 monitoring plan that we are working in collaboration with Galaxy and uh, ENA, so that we get the data access from ENA, then which is later processed by Galaxy team uh, for the Illumina data, for example, or we, or we are processing nanopore data ourselves uh, in collaboration with the BioCore team in, at uh, CRG EGA. And uh, and then this data is then once analyzed is deposited uh, in F our FTP server, where a viral beacon platform fetch this data for the visualization purposes. But also you can directly download this uh, data through our FTP servers. Later you can do all sort of uh, you know analysis that, that I'm sure uh, later in, in this this uh, conference will be covering. And uh, so this is the basic idea, the basic collaboration that we are we are uh, working on. But before starting a bit about viral beacon, I wanted to talk about beacon, uh, human beacon. That is this, uh, in, the idea was based. So what is human beacon? Uh, human beacon, or in general beacon, is a GA4GH initiated for the federated discovery of uh, genomics data in biomedical research and clinical applications. This project was born to, main, to maintain the privacy of human genomics data while at the same time um, sharing this data, uh, uh, given all the privacy and you know, ethical concerns in mind. So the basic idea that was born for Beacon was that uh, uh, we don't want to know anything about you know, metadata, identity uh, of the patient, et cetera, et cetera. We, you just tell us at this position, do you see a variation or a mutation? So for example, at position X, uh, there is a, you know, do you see a C or T at that position? And then the simple beacon design was to just get the response yes and no. So this was, uh, you know, one way to quick, uh, quick uh, search for the variations in human genomics uh, without jeopardizing the privacy of the, of the data. So that was the design of Beacon version one. And right now we are developing a version two. Uh, again, EGA is uh, leading uh, this uh, Beacon version two. And what we are trying to do here is to make it uh, a bit wider than before. So for example, in the previous version, you could only ask for certain mutation and you would get the response as in yes and no. But for with version two, what we are trying to achieve here is to get a bit more information, for example, given that the mutation that you see at that position, could you give me a bit more information about it, like what kind of diseases this mutation has been seen, or, you know, which, uh, which uh, group is holding this kind of data, so how can I apply for permission for to access this kind of data set, for example, or other metadata set with that I can access about, about this mutation. 
so uh, so one way how Beacon works is basically uh, you have your genomics data set. You can be an institute or a clinical repository or you know um, a private entity. Doesn't matter. You can have uh, your genomics data set, and what you do is to put Beacon on top of it. You know, and however you are storing the data, it, it is uh, um, irrespective of uh, what what way you you store the data uh, you you uh, put a beacon on top of it it's like the, we call it beaconizing uh, the entity you know uh, in this case hospitals and then uh, what beacon does is uh, it uh, asks for queries or you know it uh, it uh, generates this response that a uh, that a query uh, a user can ask and then it collects aggregates all the responses from different entities and then it uh, it shows you through beacon network uh, it gives you back what you are looking for, what kind of questions that you're asking. Um, this way you can ask, uh, you know, different uh, query types that now Beacon version 2 can handle. So uh, everything about genomic variant uh, uh, annotations, you know, ClinVar IDs, uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, also some information about the individuals, like, uh, you know, what kind of uh, um, sex or age or what kind of diseases this variant has been seen, et cetera. Um, more about biosamples, you know, and so on and so forth. So that was the idea that we were already working on. And then this uh, viral beacon came into the picture because I want to tell a little bit of story uh, that when we were working on this, this was the scenario uh, where we work uh, basically during the lockdown. Um, we have, our institute is based on next to the hospital and you can see in the picture, second picture that these uh, makeshift tents, uh, you know, temporary tents were, um, were um, put there in front of our office as a, as a part of extension of the hospital that we work next to. So this was the scenario every, uh, and then we thought that let's see what we can do with the, with the SARS-CoV-2. And uh, basically it started with this uh, very, uh, you know, basic planning and uh, despite us not having any expertise uh, uh, in, the, in the virus uh, genomics, what we tried to do is to set up a system where a team uh, like a Galaxy can, uh, can you know, uh, collaborate and share their data and we can hold something for visualization. And also we, uh, on our side as well, we started analyzing some data or making collaborations. So, so many good things happened during this time. And uh, what I want to say is like, finally, what we are ending up to is that we, are, we have this platform for data visualization, but also uh, to share this data that I will talk later, you know, our FTP server that you can just go and download it and you know play with the data for your your own curiosity or if you are you know virus genomics expert you can contact us we can help you in whichever way we can uh, the basic schema of uh, beacon viral beacon is that uh, basically the data we uh, is downloaded from ena uh, whatever is available for SARS-CoV-2, then we filter it based on um, human host and apply other filters as well. And then the metadata is sent to the metadata filtering and harmonization team, uh, while the raw data, the genomics data is go is divided into, you know, Illumina data that uh, Galaxy is analyzing and Oxford Nanocore data that BioCore team at CRT is analyzing uh, in collaboration with us. And um, consensus data, we are using micro GMT pipeline. Uh, this data is then, uh, you know, later annotated, um, um, you know, uh, it's, it is converted into beacon friendly format and then uh, we apply um, beacon uh, on, on top of this data set. And then this is then um, um, imported to platform, viral beacon platform for the visualization. Uh, the data is imported also to JBrowse for, for, you know, visualization of the BAM files, etc. And um, also on FTP servers for, for the download. The selection criteria is that we are applying right now is that it has to be SARS-CoV-2 because there are many different SARS-CoV variations there in the in ENA database. Uh, host exon is human because also these experiments have been done, you know, on mouse model, etc. So uh, we are specific for only uh, host exon human. Uh, target sequence is whole genome sequencing. The sample source is natural or clinical in origin and uh, sequencing technology, what we are restricting to Illumina or Expo, Oxford Manipur. 
Uh, data, I wanted to talk a bit also about data harmonization, which is a very uh, lengthy and tiresome process, although it doesn't look, uh, you know, from the outside, it doesn't look so, uh, so it looks trivial, but it was not because usually this data comes to, as a free text and, you know, I mean, uh, it's just that uh, uh, it's, you can see, for example, this COVID-19 uh, that is, you know, get written in different ways. There is, uh, there is also COVID-22 or COVID-23. Um, yeah, and, to, and likewise, you know, the free text. So then we have to look into, you know, what are the variations of the, uh, of the text. And if the, it is clear to us what, uh, what the submitter intended to, to write, we can, uh, we convert all of this into one tab. So in, in this case, it will be COVID-19. And likewise for, uh, you know, swabs, so nasopharyngeal and uh, it is the same things has been, could be written in different ways. So, so what we try to do is to optimize it into the nearest uh, um, tag. And the same, so the story doesn't end here. We see the same for, you know, dates, uh, um, country, um, host sex, uh, host disease, et cetera, et cetera. So what we try to do is to optimize that. And if it is not clear to us, we, we remove it from the, from the sample. And um, the available data right now in Viral Beacon is around more than 100,000. Uh, and we are, uh, we are working on more of it. Uh, so this is what the data that you will see for visualization on the Viral Beacon. But on our FTP side, it holds uh, much more data than that. A quick, um, a quick uh, summary of uh, what you're going to find on, uh, on the web page. Uh, so there is uh, the search for variant. So you can write your variant, what you're looking for. Uh, you can play with the information tag. So there are different way of uh, entering. You can all, only search, you know, all variants at this position, or you can search for specific variants. For example, show me at this position, only those that, has, that is C and changing to T, et cetera. So it gives you some information about, uh, about you know, the metadata, where, where this data is coming from, what was the frequency in, uh, in different um, platforms, uh, uh, sequencing platform. For example, here you see ENA Illumina, ENA ONT, and the same variant frequency in ENA consensus data. Uh, so how it varies uh, in different data set. These data has been normalized uh, platform specific. And uh, and um, it's it, uh, yeah, uh, other information. So there are different ways to query, uh, SNP query, region query, feature queries, uh, motif queries, and amino acid queries um, that you can uh, play around. And uh, one example of region query, for example, is uh, uh, that you can see, you know, uh, different uh, frequencies of the variants on the given position or the range of the position. Uh, likewise, we have motive search. If you want to see a short repetitive gamers, uh, if you want to see where they have appeared and if, if they have been mutated and how, this is one way of uh, finding uh, through, uh, through motive query search. Uh, it, the data, the, also you can find the summary of the metadata for, because now, uh, I mean, data is getting more and more. So to, to make it, uh, you know, compact for visualization, what we put is some plots to, for quick, quick analysis of the, of the metadata. And let me just go on quickly now to, to web browser for uh, having a quick demo session. So this is a homepage of Viral Beacon, some, some information, uh, very, uh, you know, quick visualization of uh, most mutated uh, positions uh, you see here, uh, highly mutated and uh, different colors show different uh, data uh, platform. Uh, and some file statistics on the data, you know, uh, that um, just to give summary where the geographic location, where the, big, uh, where, uh, is the most data coming from. For example, UK here, we see that uh, um, most of the data that we are seeing in Viral Beacon has come from COG UK project, quite big project, and the data was publicly shared. So we, therefore, we have a lot more data from there than uh, other countries. And uh, then we have, uh, you know, variant uh, search page. So to, as I explained before, to search for the uh, variants that you are interested in. Um, that I said, for example, there are different ways to make query. So there is a position specific and variant specific, but also there is, you know, all you can just uh, look for uh, certain, um, you know, SNP um, or 
all sort of variants that you have uh, in this position, like insertions or deletions as well. So, so uh, please uh, play, uh, feel free to play. And uh, yeah, further you can do many other filters. You can apply to restrict your searches. Uh, for example, what sample source, um, the origin of you know the sample type, uh, the platform, um, host sex, uh, host age, uh, range of age, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, yeah, likewise, uh, uh, another one would be, uh, for example, sorry, let me go to. A multivariant query. So here, uh, this was developed because we started seeing that you know this alpha variant, delta variants, etc. They started coming as uh, you know is the co-occurring variants. So if somebody wants to search, you know, show me variants that are occurring this, this, this together. So all the samples with these uh, variants. So that you can make a query here. So this is option, for example, for most common, uh, most common um, uh, lineage that uh, that you can see and we found in literature so you can make a query and you can see how many samples or you know what country these uh, uh, these lineages we, we see uh, we have uh, so this was multivariant i already explained the region query um, let me so this region query again you you uh, enter your range of positions that you want to see and uh, and basically yeah, from there you can you can get some information and uh, frequency plots. Uh, all of these have frequency tracking plots. So it takes a bit uh, time to load, uh, but have some patience and you can see in real time, uh, you know, the frequency of the certain variants, how, how they were shown uh, or they are going up or down, etc. Uh, likewise, there's motive search. For example, you write a camel uh, you know, that you're interested in and it, uh, at the background it's using FEMO and it's making a search for the uh, camel and then you can click uh, basically which motif you're interested, uh, which positions and then how it has been changed if there was a change on the, um, you know, on the nucleotide level. You, uh, what else? Yes, we also have a JBrowse instance. So JBrowse is a genome browser here that is uh, that you can find for looking deeper into the data. So then in directly into the weeds and band files to, to be precise at your findings. And this has been arranged, uh, you know, with different uh, in countries. Uh, so to make things easier. So, so that was a quick uh, introduction. Please feel free to browse the uh, viral beta for more data visualization. Presentation. Okay. So yeah, so the data monitoring plan, basically that I was uh, saying before, uh, where we have come from here. So right now, Beacon uh, COVID-19 monitoring plan holds uh, around more than 700,000 files, uh, around 15 TB of data on our FTP server, free to download, open, uh, you know, for, for exploration purposes, for research purposes. And uh, this is the site uh, for, for the data download. Uh, the projection in future for the viral beacon project is that there is a lot, uh, means a lot more data in public repositories that we ha that have not been analyzed yet, but it will eventually end up uh, in, in these FTP server. And this is in process. So we are continuously working uh, with, you know, with the BioCore team for the nanocore data analysis or with Galaxy teams. And also not only what is on public um, servers, we also, um, Galaxy is uh, analyzing data from you know country specific uh, um, country specific data that uh, that also uh, viral beacon is receiving. So in future there is a lot of uh, lot more data that is yet to come come. And um, so what we can do with these data? So another question that is you know we are holding this data um, for research research purposes, but uh, how it can be utilized. So of course, uh, we are not viral experts here. It's something that, uh, you know, something that we read and we try to tell others to, to utilize, especially the viral genomic expert to, to use this data set for uh, good research purposes. So for example, one very common question that one could ask is to show the low frequency intra-host variations. Um, 
uh, that is consistent across strains. You know, the, so the low frequency, uh, usually the low frequency variants are not detected uh, in GCR in other or in other databases. If you see that uh, these uh, low frequency variants will not even appear, you know, unless they are present in at least 70 or 80 percent of the um, of the samples, they are usually masked. So this is one good way to ask for the, you know, for the low frequency variants to, to see if how they are, you know, making their way out. So the appearance of, uh, you know, Delta variants, et cetera, how they are, uh, how it started. Uh, so to trace that kind of uh, uh, frequency, for example that kind of story. Another could be uh, that I was saying, uh, uh, saying before, intra-host variability. So, so what I was mentioning, uh, consensus variants, you see that is more like when once it crosses above certain threshold, then only uh, those are the ones that are recorded. And that is what you see in most public uh, available um, data platform. But what about these variants? Uh, they are in very low frequency, but um, but uh, they are, um, you know, coming up there. So this is one plot to show exactly that. Uh, this is the Illumina data for the same variant, uh, and you see the how it started showing up in very, uh, in you know, in in the Illumina data. While in consensus data, it wasn't appearing uh, in any of the platforms uh, until uh, it started eventually, you know, in. In October, for example, this is one example of a farmed mink variant uh, Y453F that have started appearing in humans. So it was already appearing long before than what we started observing in the consensus data set. In around October, we started observing that, but we were already observing this variant in Illumina uh, data set. Uh, likewise, you know, uh, what other um, uh, other analysis, for example, synonymous versus non-synonymous uh, mutations. Uh, you know, here this plot is showing that uh, most of these intra-host variations at low frequency that we are observing were actually non-synonymous uh, mutations. So somebody might want to look at the look into into that. Um, Real-time tracing of all variants evolution. So this is uh, the variant evolution plot uh, that also Viral Beacon provides that you see at the below uh, on, on your screen. So it's like real-time tracing since the data arrived to Viral Beacon, how this, uh, this variant has been evolving. Um, okay, so mm, that will be from my side. Uh, for more information on Viral Beacon, please uh, visit the pipeline page that is on the website to see uh, what kind of tools and pipelines we are using. Uh, there is a summary statics of the data that we uh, that we receive uh, for the usage of Viral Beacon. Uh, it's an old statistics that had needs to be renewed, but uh, we see uh, monthly users uh, between 500 to 600, uh, you know, um, access accessing our server and uh, and uh, uh, I want to say a big thank you to the team and the the collaborators uh, my colleagues uh, who were part of this uh, this uh, platform development also a big thank you to galaxy team for being persistent and uh, collaborating uh, you know with us um, and I think it's because uh, um, uh, it just uh, we felt motivated that you know this is uh, this is something that we have developed that is being uh, that is becoming useful for the community. Uh, so thank you to the Galaxy team. Thank you to the BioCore team at CRG for helping us with the data analysis uh, bias. Uh, please write to me or my team about any queries about Viral Beacon, any suggestions, any uh, you know problems uh, with the data set, etc. Please reach out to me or my team. And we will be happy to hear from you. Thank you. My name is Babita, and it was a pleasure to uh, to give a talk about Viral Beacon. Thank you. <laughs>